Over the years, as I moved from high school to college to whatever was supposed to follow college, I seriously began to work at my skills as a writer. After all, I did get a BA in journalism in 1991 from Cal State Fullerton. One thing that came from this was a skill to observe and a fascination or curiosity about life and we human creatures. What is man? asks the poet. So I brought this love of the word and one minute discovery to my first assignment as an elementary school teacher. Alas, I quickly discovered that there seemed to be a gigantic cultural gap between myself and my classroom full of non-English speakers, and an even larger gap between them and the sixth grade social studies textbook that we were supposed to use, for example. So, not knowing any better, I got a copy of the state social studies framework and began to create a curriculum that my mostly low literacy students could work with. I created booklets for each unit containing crossword puzzles, word searches, short articles with multiple choice or short answer quizzes, and maps to color and fill in. The books were, done, were designed to be done individually, but also supported working on as a group. But I also wanted to get past just using text, so the core of each unit tended to be a video or story that would personify the particular civilizations that we were studying. For our ancient peoples unit, we read Maru of the Winter Caves. For our unit on Mesopotamia, I found a child-friendly copy of the Epic of Gilgamesh and a picture book version and combined the two versions to create a more engaging unit. As a writer, I really wanted to spurn my students' creativity and sense of discovery through their own writing and thus jumped into writer's workshop with both feet. Alas, my students didn't see the prospect of writing in their journal every night with the same enthusiasm as I did. Granted, they were working in a second language and I was probably the first teacher who required that they work primarily in English. And there's something else about the socialization process in current public education that seems to sap the innate curiosity of these young minds, such that by the time they're in sixth grade, only the two or three classroom nerds would welcome an assignment like writing in one's journal every night. It just wasn't cool enough. Time to use the video solution. I'd been experimenting with video since the end of my bachelor's degree. In fact, the reason that I went back to video back then, being a print journalist, was for a media class where we were supposed to present a report about a media issue. I got bored stiff watching talking head after talking head drone through their little oral reports. I decided that if I was going to present a paper about the media, what better way to make a presentation about it than to use it? So my presentation about women in MTV was a series of clips over which I recorded a voiceover of my paper, Instant A. Since then I've employed the video solution wherever possible. This seemed like a perfect solution when faced with a classroom full of unenthusiastic, unmotivated sixth graders. So, I scrunched up two mostly unused VHS cameras in my own little VHSC camera, broke the class up into groups of three or four, and instructed them to come up with their own ideas for short PSAs, public service announcements. I trained them on how to use the cameras and sent the groups who were ready to shoot out to film in the playground and the field around the classroom. After spending 20 or so minutes filming, I'd call the groups back in and we'd have the whole class critique what things worked and what things didn't work from that day's videotaping. For the most part, the students tended to retell stories or TV shows that they continually saw on TV. Thus many PSAs seemed to de-evolve into long-running police chases a la cops. Eventually two groups organized themselves into straight TV news shows with an anchor at the desk and reporters in the field, literally. I also got the idea from listening to a Jane Child song called Welcome to the Re Real World to have my students write a paragraph or two about what they thought about when they heard their parents talk about the real world. I then took the nine best essays and had them read their essays into a tape deck to create a voiceover to the song with video footage I'd taken of walking through downtown Long Beach in the middle of the night. See Classroom Video Journalism for these clips. My video experiments caught the attention of the principal and she asked me to write up a wish list of what software and hardware it would take to create an on-campus video studio designed to produce, edit, and broadcast live student-created news programs. My list became part of our school's federal magnet grant application. A year later, we were awarded the grant and it became my full-time job to make the little list into a functioning program. Ferguson Elementary became FACT, Ferguson Academy of Communication and Technology. When we began to create the video program, the person in charge of curriculum and the principal wanted to use the studio like another drop-off activity, 
similar to the way teachers drop off their students for computer lab, library time, or PE. But the requirements of video editing and production didn't conform to 30 minute shifts. Instead, I worked with one fifth grade class and one sixth grade class for a third of the year so that all three fifth grade and all three sixth grade classes got a chance to work on the broadcasts. As I had done with my own students in the first experiments, I had the fifth graders break up into teams of four. They were in charge of videotaping and editing the remote packages of interviews and activities that I'd assigned to them. Everyone in the team needed to know how to do every job, but two would primarily do the camera work and interviewing, and the other two would take the tape and edit it down to short three-minute segments that we could use in the news program. The sixth graders were in charge of the studio and news broadcasts. They were broken down into areas of interest such as news, weather, entertainment, and sports. They were also given an opportunity to be one of the on-air reporters, work one of the three cameras, assist the camera person, run the Trinity video graphic switcher, run the tape machines, or be the floor director. We were able to produce 11 news shows during our first year of operation. Kindergarten through fourth grade and the fifth and sixth grade classrooms not working as part of the video teams were given studio time to present their own commercials, readings, and presentations. These classrooms were also welcomed to have one of our fifth grade remote coverage teams videotape their event. See Magnet School, Fact TV for examples of work done during this program. From the research to putting together the booklets, to covering my classroom walls with diagrams and maps, to reading the stories together using an overhead projector to display seven foot image of Gilgamesh and Enkidu fighting the Bull of Heaven. Very little of this could have been done had I not had access to several technologies, and also suffered from the ignorance of a novice who didn't know what could or couldn't be done.